Ocean November 4, Bravo Whiskey. Oscar November 4, Bravo Whiskey, Security X. Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now in this video, we'll take a look at a portable dipole antenna called the DP200. Now this antenna covers a frequency range of between 7 MHz up to 54 MHz. Now tuning is performed by adjusting the length of the included 5.6 meter telescopic antennas. Power rating is stated to be 200 watt continuous with 500 watt peak. Now also in the box there are two aluminium induction coils which are attached to the mounting bracket when wanting to use the 40 meter band i.e. 7 MHz. Now the main bracket has what looks like some form of matching unit. Now we'll take a look inside this shortly. The bracket appears to be made out of some form of thick plastic, maybe acrylic, but I'm not 100% sure of the actual material. Now, as mentioned a moment ago, when wanting to tune for the 40 meter band, the induction coils are simply screwed into the antenna threaded sockets. Then the telescopic antennas screw into the coil. Also provided is a 40 meter matcher, which just slots into the provided sockets. Now personally, I've not seen these type of matching contraptions before. So if you know electrically how these work, then let us know down in the comments below. Now taking a closer look at the mounting bracket, it's clear that the antenna threaded sockets can be moved from the V position to a horizontal position, meaning you can use this antenna as a V style or horizontal. Now to do so, you just unbolt the little U-bolts and move them down to position. Now apparently V-Style would be preferred for DX, whereas horizontal for more local communications. Now on the rear of the mountain bracket, we find just one pole bracket, which uses wing nuts to tighten. Now this makes deploying and taking down so much faster when you're out there in the field. Now the waterproof matching box, where you have the 50 ohm coax feeder, is easily disassembled by removing the four lid screws. Now once I'm done, just be careful not to lose that waterproof seal as you'll need to put it back in place when done. Now in theory, there should be no need for you to open this unit and I'm only doing so for the purpose of this video. Now the ferrite appears to be encapsulated in some form of waterproof resin, which is dried hard. Now counting the turns on this transformer, it would appear that this is a nine to one. Now I'm not an expert when it comes to this, so I might be wrong, but let me know down in the comments but a nine to one would make sense for this type of antenna. So let's take it outside and set it up. Now to support the antenna, I've used a tripod mount, which is from one of my studio lights. And this is slightly telescopic, so it allows me to work on the antenna and then raise it up. Although the maximum height of this is only a few meters. This antenna would probably work best as high as you can get it, unless of course you're aiming for NVIS. As you can see here, I've changed the position of the antenna sockets and attached the 40 meter coils. So for this test, I will set up the antenna to work on the 40 meter band, which is seven megahertz. The machining on these induction coils is pretty good and the telescopic antennas screw nicely into them. As this is a dipole, I attach both telescopic antennas, one either side of that mounting bracket with both of the induction coils. Then I attach the 40 meter matching loop. No idea what this does or even why it's needed, but it says to fit it in the instructions. Now the telescopic pole are pulled out pretty much as far as they can go, with only one small section pushed back in to get into the ballpark figure of where we want to be. Now I'll be aiming for a resonant tune at around 7.1 megahertz, which is right in the middle of the 40 meter band. As you can see in this configuration, the telescopic poles do bend downwards quite a bit and we're getting more close to an inverted V than we are a horizontal dipole. So time to attach the coax feeder, which goes off to my shack, and then we'll check the SWR. As you can see here, the SWR is slightly low to where we want to be. So back out the antenna and shorten it as we want to raise that center frequency. That took less than 60 seconds to fine tune the antenna to 7.1 megahertz just pushing in the first segment of the telescopic antenna on both sides until I was happy. Now, as I want to leave this set up for a couple of days, I've decided to use three guide wires. It's just Kevlar tied to the center pole and then off to some tent pegs in the ground. It can get quite windy here as the wind blows across the rear fields. So I thought it would be best to give it some stability. So back in the shack and to double check the SWR. 
This time it's spot on where I want it to be. However, what I do notice is that the bandwidth is extremely narrow, a lot narrower than I expected and hoped for. With the SWR down to lower than 1.5 at the resonant point and then up to around 3 at the band edges. Now this isn't a major issue as I can use the radio's inbuilt tuner to smooth these out, but I would have liked to see a wider bandwidth so I didn't need to use a tuner. If you're using this type of antenna out in the field, whether it's SOTA or POTA or just a general field day, then adjusting the antenna to your perfect tune point is extremely fast and extremely easy to do, so it's not really a big issue. Let's take a look and see what we can hear on a 40 meter band. Now the antenna selection A will be the NFED half wave and selection B will be the DP200 antenna. So keep an eye on that top left corner for when I switch between each antenna. Um, I've been up to one for a while actually. Uh, this is my first HF rig. All my time on the air I've always been VHF and UHF. Um, so decided to venture into HF in January this year and I must admit very, very pleased I did. Um, so yeah, but like I say, always a really, really good reports about the uh, the ICOM 7300. So uh, like I say, that'll, that'll probably be my next one. Um, but yeah, this, this rig seems to be doing um, uh, fairly well at the minute. Uh, the prices of them seem to be going up as well. Um, das geworden ist, dass äh, wieder mal äh, vielleicht doch nochmal ein Anschub kommt äh, für die Trauben oder auch für alle anderen Pflanzen. Äh, uh, it's a nice to meet up with you uh, again, uh, Dave. Um, I was very disappointed to see the weather you were having over the weekend. I was uh, following the cricket ball by ball and uh, uh, obviously uh, over the test match cricket, that is. And uh, uh, Well, as you could hear there, there wasn't actually that much difference in it. In fact, the dipole seemed to have a bit less noise than the NFED half-wave. Now, I specifically chose a couple of weak stations in that little sample clip just so you could see the difference between the two. There's no point having mega strong stations and comparing antennas. So it's the next day and I wanted to try 20 meters, which is 14 megahertz. Now, I don't know why, but every time I try and review an HF antenna, the HF bands go deader than a dodo. Anyhow, there were a few stations on and I was able to perform a comparison between the NFED half wave and the DP200 tuned for 20 meters, but this time mounted in a V dipole configuration. Now the SWR plot once tuned appeared to be quite broadbanded, meaning we achieved an SWR of 1.5 or below across the entire 20 meter band. Now let's take a listen to see what we could hear. You are in Florida, I listen, you are in Maine. You are in Florida or in Maine, Edward? Uh, I am in Florida, working the station out of Maine remotely. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Thank you very much. 55 for you, Oslo. 55 here on my vertical, uh, vertical, <laughs> vertical pattern, at, uh, and uh, your 4, plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. Uh, Working well, eh? working well. Not, not fantastic condition, but 57 real report here, okay? Now again, there didn't seem to be that much in it between the NFED half-wave and the dipole antenna, which makes me wonder, if I was to raise the V-dipole above the roof of the house, how much better this antenna would perform. Now it's just a shame I don't have any support for my large portable mast just yet, but hopefully in the near future I'll get some and then we can even try that. Now overall, I think this is a pretty good portable antenna. Not so sure about it being a permanent install due to the telescopic elements, but it's definitely a good contender for portable use, especially as those telescopic elements shrink right down to a reasonable length. Now I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check this antenna out or even purchase one. I think at around the time of making this video, this antenna costs around 100 UK pounds. You can find out the exact cost for your currency by checking the link below. Anyway guys, thanks for watching and if you enjoy my content, please feel free to subscribe. It'd be nice to have you on board. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.